Micronesia. Ranging far, sweeping wide, American warships venture deep into the Central Pacific. Bigger, faster, mightier carriers are the core of the task force destined to destroy the Japanese Empire. Around the carriers, the battleships are ringed. Around the battleships, the cruisers. Around the cruisers, destroyers. It is autumn, 1943. Radically new tactics are the United States Navy's answer to the challenge of World War II. The immediate targets are the Gilbert and Marshall Islands, scattered for 1,000 miles athwart the equator. Mandated to the Japanese in 1920, the islands are studded with enemy fortifications. Land-based planes cannot reach them. But the Navy's floating airfields audaciously sail into striking range and deliver the blows that lead to invasion, to conquest. homing pigeons, the Hellcats and Corsairs return. Mission accomplished. Marcus Island has been worked over, but the flying sailors will be back. The carriers are nibbling at their prey, preparing for the kill. Pilots make their combat intelligence reports. This information is the blueprint for future assault. After hard-hitting months at sea, the task force returns to base, to Pearl Harbor. Eighteen months ago, the scene of the most humiliating military catastrophe in the history of the United States. Today, Pearl Harbor is the mightiest of bases, sheltering an ever-expanding fleet, ever-increasing assault forces. And only minutes away is Honolulu, a light-hearted haven in the midst of war an interlude for sailors between battles. come from places like Kansas, Alabama, and Oregon. They are destined for places like Tarawa, Kwajalein, and any we talk. The names are worlds apart, but global strategy demands they be brought together. Tokyo lies 4,000 miles westward by sea. It cannot be reached unless these men first suffer and bleed and die on intervening coral atolls that block the way. of Midway, Admiral Spruance, is named Commander, Central Pacific Forces, by his chief, Admiral Nimitz. Under Spruance, powerful, fast carrier forces sail from Pearl Harbor to test the possibilities of sustaining seaborne air power far from base, far from land support. The fleet is out to strike, to strike and stay.
fast, new Essex-class carriers bring air power where air power is needed, anywhere, anytime. Each of the 27,000-ton ships can be driven through the water at a speed that keeps pace with the fastest units in the fleet. Between their bouts with death, the ship's company and the pilots live and play as best they can. For the 2,500 sailors, the ship is a seagoing city, organized for the routine of day-to-day -day existence, as well as the requirements of war. Micronesia, the tiny islands. Strategy for the coming conquest is explained to the men who must execute the plans. While Marines claw up the Solomon Islands in the South Pacific, while soldiers push northwestward on New Guinea in the Southwest Pacific, the carrier groups smash at enemy defenses in the Central Pacific, compelling him to split his forces, confusing him as to the main line of attack. The hour for action approaches. sailor in every part of the ship prepares for the coming attack. In the general mess, ship's cooks break out special chow they have stowed away for moments like this. Tense, long moments before battle. and Namur, 
sailors prepare the way for soldiers and marines. Japanese resistance makes an inferno of every beachhead, a hell of every shoreline. American troops are pushed to the limit of endurance, but they endure. 